All right. I think everyone now can see, right? People in Zoom land, you can see? All right, good. Thank you for giving me a heads up. So welcome everyone to Art with Liz. And our artist of focus today, again, is Amy Sherald. I've chosen Amy Sherald for us to look at and spend a little time with today because she is a fantastic figurative artist. She's come to prominence lately because of her portrait of Michelle Obama, which has been on display very recently at the Brooklyn Museum. It's come down um, and has traveled elsewhere, but it was up for quite a while. She was born on August 30th, 1973, and grew up in the South, in Georgia. She experienced, um, as a, she is an African American artist, she experienced quite a bit of um, racism as she was growing up. And she also experienced a lot of what I guess we could call colorism because she is a light skinned African American. So within the larger community, she experienced racism, but also amongst the African-American community in which she lived. She also experienced being an outsider at times because she is lighter in complexion. So skin color for her has always been an area of interest and has been something that she's focused on throughout her life, philosophically and also in her work. She struggled to become a professional artist. Her parents wanted her to become a doctor, not a very atypical story for an artist. Um, she actually grew up in a middle-class household. Uh, her father, I believe, yes, her father was a dentist and she grew up um, in a comfortable lifestyle. And she didn't realize until she was an older child that art could be a profession, that someone could become an artist and make a living at it. And she also didn't realize that Black people made art and Black people could become artists until she went to a museum and saw a portrait by the realistic artist, Bo Bartlett. And this was kind of a revelation for her. At that moment, she realized that this was a possibility for her as well. She did go to school, to medical school initially. She did try uh, to fulfill her parents' dream for her, but it didn't work. It's good news for us. She went to the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore, received a Master of Fine Art, in 2004, she studied with the great abstract expressionist painter Grace Hardigan. And then she also uh, went to Norway, where she worked with the artist Odd Nerdrum and received an honorary doctorate of fine arts also from the Maryland Institute College of Art. But as I said, she struggled to become a fully professional artist. She waited tables until she was 38 years old, struggling to make a living for herself. Her work was controversial because she painted in gray tone. She doesn't paint African-American skin color in shades of brown. She paints skin color in shades of gray. And she explains this, to me this is so wonderfully interesting. She likes to use the gray tones because she feels it forces the viewer to think about the people in her portraits as people with an internal life. People who are thinking and worrying about their everyday issues. Not to focus on them, primarily as Black people, but to look at them as everyday people with the same problems and thoughts and ideas as everyone. 
But this, of course, made her work controversial because in the beginning, no one really understood or accepted why she did that. Welcome, Susan. Come on in. Can I just say something about that? Sure. Anytime anybody wants to say anything, please pop on in and say something. Go ahead, Heather. Uh, I always thought when I see her painting on the skin color, I see it right there. It looks like black and white photography. You see here, uh, and she started talking like the uh, blog, black and white family, and photography. Of, uh, and this is a color reminds me of a different grayscale in black and white photography. Yes. And I'm so glad you brought that up, Heather. Awesome. I was just about to talk about this. Another influence and inspiration for her to work in grayscale was early black and white photography of black people. She had seen a whole collection of black and white photographs of people like W.E.B. Du Bois and other African-American figures in a museum collection. And that really also helped her fall in love with the whole idea of using grayscale to depict different skin tones. So that is an inspiration for her work. But here's a quote from her that further explains her use of grayscale. She said, quote unquote, she feels she and her contemporaries are free to come in and really explore ourselves versus educating people about who we are. It's like now we can deal with the nuances of who we are, making paintings that focus on inner complex lives and escape that public black identity. And she usually works on these paintings by having a long, photo shoot with the subjects that she chooses. She frequently will invite people that she sees on the street, just walking down the street. She'll invite them into her studio. She'll photograph them for hours on end and then choose the image that she likes best and create a portrait from that photograph. She waits till the person is comfortable. She likes to have a more relaxed feel to the poses that she picks including the one that she did with Michelle Obama. All right, I think that's enough talking about her work. Is there anyone on Zoom who has something that they wanna add about the biographical information I've given to you? She is represented by Hauser and Worth Gallery in New York City. She had a big show there last year. Hi, Lily, come on in. She doesn't like it. The tight space. Yeah. Too bad. Liz, may I share something quickly? Good morning, this is Lauren. Yes, Lauren, absolutely. Um, I saw a few interviews and uh, I looked at a ton of her art I absolutely loved her and um oh my videos not on and um she said something that I thought was really cool and she said becoming an artist is not empirical you actually have to put in a lot of hard work but it doesn't mean that you're going to make it but all of that hustle once you get that big break and it comes to you it's like oh yeah this is who I am and I just thought that that was so cool because I definitely wanted to go to med school and I felt like I had to take this path until I accepted that I'm fully creative and, and I wanted to go down that road. And I just, I love her spirit. I love her work. I love the feeling um, that she gets through the eyes and even, and I know we haven't looked at it yet, but like in the face, many people are, I think most of her portraits there are not, they're not smiling, is that correct? But you still, there's so much emotion um, that's evoked from looking at them. I just, it's amazing. So I just wanted to share that. And good morning to everybody. <laughs> good morning, Lauren. Thank you so much for sharing that observation. I'm not 
sure about the smiling or not smiling in her portraits. So I want to pay close attention to that. And I invite everyone else to look too. We're about to start looking at her portraits. That's so cool. And your path to creativity is not that different from others. So thank you for sharing that as well. Awesome. So cool. Okay. Whoops, did that wrong. <laughs> okay, give me a minute, everyone. But I love, really love looking at, at you, Lauren. <laughs> Preferable to me, I have to say. Okay, do I click remove spotlight now? Oh, right. Oh, you did it for me already. Thank you, Heidi. All right, let's look at some of Amy Sherald's art. Yeah, don't I have to open it first? I think you have to open. So this is one of her more famous images. It's the Vanity Fair cover of Brianna Taylor, the young woman who was tragically killed in her apartment. So what Shepard has said about this is she's made it unapologetically in your face that Brianna is proud of who she is and staring right at the viewer. Notice the beautiful proportions. Those of you who have not worked with me before, we can use the head as a measuring tool when drawing the human figure and our arms are three head lengths long, sometimes three and a half head lengths long. So you can see that Shepard has kept Brianna in excellent proportion. Love the hand on the hip gesture. It shows Brianna's pride in herself. Gorgeous use of color. And again, she is in grayscale. Also called grise is the French word. In this class, you can make comments at any time if you have something that you wanna share. But I'm gonna now kind of run through images quickly. I want everyone to get to drawing on their own work. Yeah, I should be able now, right? So just open this and share it all, good. Everybody can see, right? Okay, good. So again, the fabulous proportions in this piece, very accurate figuratively. You can measure head lengths, literally one, two, three, three and a half head lengths just for this foreleg. And this is something we call foreshortening. The leg from the knee to the tip of the foot actually looks bigger than it is in real life because you're forced to look at it first. You can't 
snake or thigh at all. So the artist has exaggerated the length of this part of the leg. And we call that foreshortening. Love this image. Remember, she's trying to make her, her subject as relaxed as possible. Oh, thank you, Michael. And she, I believe, has achieved it in this image. All right, we're going to whip through these now. Love the motion in this piece. You can see the swing of her dress, the movement of her arms. She's definitely in the act of walking. This is one of her more famous portraits. I should mention too, Amy Sherald now has a studio right here in Jersey City at Mana Contemporary. You can't go and knock on her door though, unfortunately. <laughs> she just sold the painting for over $4 million. So she's really made it. I think she lives in New York now. Yeah, she was based in Baltimore for a very long time, but the portrait of Michelle Obama put her over the top. So she went from waiting table to being famous virtually overnight. I know. On what basis They met with a number of artists and it just clicked. Michelle loved her from the moment she walked in the room. So their personalities really blended immediately. So good question, Anel. Thank you. Love the black and white. The way she uses black and white against that wonderful, what would you call that color, fuchsia, fuchsia. background. This is she right here in the front. But she loves depicting everyday black people. Even though she's become famous for paintings of famous African American people. Can I also ask you, does she only paint African American people or does she also paint other subjects? Great question. Only African American people. And she and Michelle picked this dress. There's a lot of controversy about this dress. I love it. It's just a casual maxi dress that Michelle, I think, I don't know what she purchased it for, but Amy Sherald loved it because it reminded her of the quilts of the women of G's Bend. And that's why they picked it. People wanted Michelle to be in something more formal, a little more elegant, you know, like a black dress. I, you know, everybody has an opinion. Who knows? This one's great. Look at the motion and the exuberance. Another terrific. Her use of color is fabulous. Right, I have a feeling this image is exactly the same. Yeah, I liked it so much, I put it in the folder twice. All right, I think enough. I think you get an idea of the kind of work that she does. I hope you enjoy her work as much as I do. And Here's what I wanna do now, everyone. For those of you at home, all you're gonna to need today is pencil or charcoal or any drawing media that you like. I recommend you get large paper. Um, those of you who are here, help yourselves to paper. Those of you who are beginning artists, please get pencil. Or those of you, if you're 
experienced artist, but you've never worked with me before, I recommend that you use large pencil. I only have large white drawing paper today. If you prefer working small, you can always fold the paper in half. All right, so gather up your materials. And I want to very briefly put up the picture of proportions of the human figure for our newer members of the group. While we're gathering up our materials. Michael, can we get you one of those? Oh, you did get one. Okay, cool. So people at home, bear with us. I hope you're getting the tools that you need. And Michael, before... Oh, okay, so we still have time. So as soon as you have you folks have your materials First, I'm going to talk about what's on the screen, Michael. Did you like that? I love it. Everybody at home, we're locking SD out. <laughs> That's just causing the delay. <laughs> All right, one more second, and then we're going to talk about what's on the screen as a review. Then I'm going to do a quick demonstration. Sorry, I stepped on the cord. What made that horrible sound? A lot of technical difficulties today. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. So if I can ask everyone to look briefly at the screen, I just want to review for everyone the proportions of the human figure. And we have the diagram up on the screen for you to see. If you measure the body by head lengths and count down from the top, and we have Michael here with us today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight head lengths long. The width from shoulder to shoulder, one, two, 
three head lengths wide from the top of the shoulder down to the tip of his finger. One, two, three, almost four head lengths long. Michael, put your hands down by your sides. Everybody see where his fingertips are halfway between his waist and his knees. Our arms are long, everybody. The leg from the hip to the foot. One, two, three, four head lengths in a man. From the bottom of the chin to the hip, the torso length. One, two, three head lengths. So those are proportions to keep in mind. So now I'm gonna stop the screen share. Any questions before I stop the screen share? Those of you who are new to this, I want you now to keep this in the back of your mind. I don't want you to dwell on it, but try and remember it. Now I'm going to do a quick demo. I'm going to go to the table over here so that the people at the table can see what I'm doing. Oh. I can do it. I got it. I thought I was spotlighted. This one's going to be spotlighted now for your demo. All right. All right, it's that other image. We're mastering our technical things, guys. All right, so one of the goals of my lesson today is to show you how to build body. Many of you know how to do this. You've done it with me before, but I want to review the technique of shading. Instead of using the tip of your pencil, I want you to use the side of your pencil. And when you shade the figure, start light, and you get darker as you go. And please blend your shading. You want to change from dark to light to be a gradual transition. If you were to go from very dark to the next lighter shade without blending, the figure will still look flat. So you need to make the transition gradual. Correct me if I'm wrong, you're using your finger to blend them? I am blending with my finger. There's a tool called a stump that you can purchase. It's this rolled up paper. You can take a tissue or a piece of paper towel, wrap it around your finger and blend with that. <laughs> but the blending is essential. So that's one form of shading. You can also do something called cross hatching. And cross hatching is where you lay down lines very close together if the area is dark. Darker the area is that you're shading, the closer you make the line. And then if it's very dark, you cross and patch to make the shadow even darker. And cross hatching is my favorite way to draw, but it's very labor intensive and time consuming. So I think. Don't do it with figure one. It takes too long. Try when you do shading to follow the shape of the object that you're drawing. When it's figurative, usually it's a curved shape. So 
So you want to keep the shadow curved. All right. For those of you who've never drawn the figure before, we're going to start with one minute poses. And we're going to do something called gesture drawing, where you hold the pencil by the eraser very loosely, and you're basically doing a stick figure. Just to capture the gesture that the model is in. I don't want the drawing to look like a person. Does anyone understand that? It's just a warm up for you. All right. Ready to start posing? Yes. Michael is going to set up the camera to focus on himself for all of you at home. And then we will begin. We looked at a series of five one minute poses. We're going to be super fast, which means you're not going to be able to recreate a realistic image. But just like with any new thing that you learn, you've got to warm up first. Learning how to drive a car, learning how to ride a bicycle, learning how to perform ballet or play the piano. You've got to do these exercises first. Okay. Should I change the zoom focus on the laptop? It should be okay. It should be okay. All right, anybody at home? I'm looking at the chat. Nothing in the chat. Remember at home, if you need me, chat is probably the best, or just yell. <laughs> yeah. Can everyone see? Only the bottom two thirds of his body. I don't know why, Margo. I I'm looking through that camera and I can see all of him. Mm. Yeah. I don't see his feet. Yeah. yeah, just down a little. Maybe move, push. Or do you have a laptop, Margo? Maybe push. <laughs> Maybe push your laptop further away from you. I have an iPad. Maybe I'll feature him and that'll do it. That's better. Yeah, I featured him as the. Yeah, yeah, put him. As the speaker. All right, Michael, go. Okay, good. Use those islands. Head length. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four head length. Notice the length of the arms and legs. Look at where the tips of his fingers are in relation to the knee and the waist. Capture the tilt of his shoulder. Don't worry about details. You don't care about his hair or the stripes on his sweater. <clears throat> this is a warm up exercise. If you feel more comfortable standing up to draw, do so. <laughs> yeah, it's painful, right? Those one minute pauses stink. Go, great pose. See how long his arms are. Look at where his right hand is next to his hip. Look at where his left knee is in relation to his left elbow. His wrist, his left wrist is almost up. It is up where his nose is. Try and look at the relationship. Do it fast. Don't worry about making it look good. Worry about seeing what's in front of you. That's the whole trick. Oh. 
at his waist, but not quite. My newer student, if you could see the size of the shape between his legs, we call this the negative shape of the negative space. That might help you to see the distance between his legs. shape for those of you on this side. See if you can see that. If you can tilt at the shoulders and the hips, kind of in opposite direction, aren't they? That's really helpful in this pose. Capture that. See? Hips are slight, slightly down, shoulders slightly up. <clears throat> Do a stick finger. Relax the mic while I work. The larger you draw, the more room you have for air. Doing great. Good. No, the run. <laughs> Don't bounce. You're too young to know this yet, but bouncing is really bad for the joint. My personal trainer. Look at where his wrist is in relation to his knees. That wrist that's hanging down. His fingertips, look how far down they are on his legs. The really tough part is his shoulders and the thrust of his head and neck. In order to get the fact that his body is folded like that, you've got to enlarge the head. <laughs> One minute's very fast. All right, Michael, now we're going to, what time is it, please? 10.55. Let's switch to five minute pose. So now we're going to graduate to a longer pose, a five minute pose. It's still very short, but it gives you the opportunity now to see more. I want you to start with the gesture. And then if you feel you have time, you can start fleshing out the figure. You can add more muscle to him. You can start thinking about the edges of his clothing and where they fall on his body. So go, everybody. It's a very quiet pose now. Again, look at where his elbows are. That will help you to see the length of his arm. So this for me is the key marker. Notice the distance if you can see. This length, we have a head length here. That's helpful. All of his weight is on this leg. Try 
I'm completely in the visual mode. Hear your brain saying, oh, that's wrong. Java, I did it all wrong. Try and turn that part of your brain off. Now I have a silent breath. observation. Oh, I think next week is the class where I want to focus on the hand. Hands are big, by the way. Hold the hands long. So it kind of just goes around the line. Everybody at home, you're doing okay? Five minutes feels like a lifetime now. Yeah. It occurred to me you can use the stripes on your sweater. Oh, it's long. But there's a thick stripe on the top where his elbow was. We're going to take a two minute break. <clears throat> Very important when you do this kind of work, if you stretch a little bit, just sitting for a full hour. Then take a two minute break. When you come back, start doing it. Okay? Hopefully, you are, have enjoyed yourself thus far. People at home, I want you to take a break too, please. Uh, Ian is less frazzled. How are you? Yes. Now, everybody at home, I'm starting to feel like I'm teaching now. I'm not just worried about technological problems. <laughs> So two minute break should bring us up to 11. Oh, it's already 11. So one more minute. I have a call at noon. I'm about
about my internship. It's this thing. It's the connector to my laptop. I shouldn't touch it. It's every time I touch it, it messes up. Oh, well, good luck with that. This might be about the UN. Let's see. That's the hope. That's my hope. Let's see. I can take this off. It's going to be just yeah, it's getting hot. So, is there a problem with the bedroom? room? I, I thought that we were moving eventually. Um, Not sure. That's what I had hoped too, but oh. Heidi said no. So, <laughs> well, there's a lot going on in the library. There is a lot going on in the library. As I came down to the ship. Thank you. From the Newark Museum. Oh, beautiful. As I came down, there was a guy like parting out a lot of construction stuff. So. Yeah, they're still doing a lot of renovation. Yes. Can I hear my name? You're always. Do you want to hear your name? <laughs> I can say your name. <laughs> I don't think so. I can't tell. Right. We have a long line for the restroom, but I think we have to get started. <laughs> So, folks, we're going to get started. When you get called, I wish I could just sit right by doing the work, you know? I feel weird when I'm looking at your artwork and you're trying to do me, and I'm like, I was so so Michael is now going to do 10 minute poses for us. I think we'll do two 10 minute poses, Michael, and then maybe two 15 minute poses to finish up. So we are in now the second hour of the class. I hope you're starting to feel warmed up in your work and a little bit more relaxed and confident in what you're doing. Michael, maybe if we could now turn in another direction. Sure. And maybe use the chair. <laughs> <laughs> So they'll only see your back if you do it that way. Yeah, no. That's a bad pause for people at home. All right, people at home, you can see Michael. I've asked him to turn in another direction. It may be a little bit less interesting for you, but I need to also challenge the folks here. So I want them to have a different view as well. And I want him to be comfortable now that it is a longer pose. This is going to be a 10 minute pose. Again, I recommend that you start with your gestural quick sketch, then start rounding out his figure. Now, for those of you who are here, I will start coming to give advice. When I talk to you about your work, I don't <laughs> criticize. I just will come and tell you what I see and offer you advice on what I think you might want to do on your drawing. Does it mean you have to listen to me? No. 
No, don't listen to Esme. You do not have to listen to what I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they are just suggestions but now that we're into the longer poses and you're warmed up a little bit i can help you i prefer those of you who are here in person i prefer that you draw the model don't draw from the tv screen in the best possible world if you need maybe to stand up that would be cool but it's always better to draw from life if you can only see them on the tv screen then look at the tv screen whatever is comfortable for you oh alice is leaving bye alice and I hope you find that standing up to draw helps. You have more control over what you do when you're standing up. Okay, let's begin, everyone. This is a 10 minute pose. Now, if we were in a real art school, you would probably all have easels. You would all be forced to stand up to work. And boy, you would have a teacher who would, you would have to listen to that teacher as opposed to me. <laughs> oh yeah. Most of my art school teachers, we did not argue with. Yeah. That was a very good question. Thank you for asking. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know 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 I don't
afraid the most because of several things. That's where my book elbows are. They really help you to see the length of this forearm in relation to the length of his leg. Look, from his knee to the edge of his pants leg, it's the same length as from the elbow to the wrist. Elbow to his wrist. And those are the kinds of relationships you want to look at. Head <laughs> length. And the shoulder. One, two, three, four. The tips of his fingers. Elbow, his left elbow, right at his waist. Work with those measuring tools. It's actually harder for the people in the front. The closer you are to the model, Harder it is to actually see the full figure. So we're, I have to be honest, we're all at a disadvantage in this room, except for the fact that we've got a real life person to draw, which is huge. So lucky to have Michael. Yep. What happens to the other side? Are these two models to be there? Yeah, Michael, Michael and I Michael and I did a hit job. <laughs> <laughs> oh Joseph is are you asking about Joseph? He's alive and well, but <laughs> I met Michael. I thought we should try somebody new. <laughs> Joseph and I are good Facebook friends. He's doing well. He's a awesome. He spends most of his time with his mother. He's such a great son. She needs a lot of attention. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm ready? No, that's not. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I did that. Oh. Okay. What? Somebody's keeping time? <laughs> no, we, there was a bell. Yeah. No, but someone else said we have three minutes left. We do. Because well, I thought the, someone else besides Michael. Never mind. Joseph, Joseph. That's right. <laughs> it was Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph is zooming in. Come on, ladies. Focus. Focus. Okay. <laughs> Every single time you walk right. in, your style is to work hard. And I don't know why you deny yourself that so much. Well, today it's because space. There isn't a lot of space. That's <laughs> true. But generally, I look for just today. <laughs> <laughs> I should try it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I. 
I don't think they make it too good. All right, so rhythm. Does the library have a, an iPhone charger? Thank you. Oh, I know what's wrong. This the who's he what this the strip is not plugged in. Oh. <laughs> so we have one more technological problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, it's now plugged in. Thank you for noticing that now. My artists at home, are you all good? Looks that way. Lauren, are you drawing in your car? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. Yes, my car's being worked on today, so I'm. We're taking you on the road today. <laughs> awesome. Nothing worse than being stuck at the garage. Perfect way to spend your time. I couldn't agree more. Thanks for being with me. <laughs> Our pleasure. Did anybody notice if Amy Sherald's portraits were non-smiling? I yeah. can't remember. Such an interesting thing. Right. 
celebrate that one. Mm-hmm. I can find the ribs for that. Oh, gosh. Oh. It's, this length is pretty big. Yeah. Well, it's that. And well, it's a piece of elbow. Or that waist mm-hmm. height. That is really <laughs> helpful in this pose. Curvature in the back is the whole key mm-hmm. here. Try and get that beautiful curve. Done that measurement for sure. One, two, three. Or so remember, that's the center. Or so it's three head lengths from the neck to the waist. <laughs> you do get rusty. Yeah. So watch this stuff. <laughs> He's really arched over pretty far. His head is right, his chin is right over in his knee. It's not upright. So try and see that curvature on his back. Well, yeah, he's really arched, but his head is straight. Everybody, everybody in my head is wide. Well, I haven't said that.
That's the thing. We don't see everything. That's what this process is about. All right. So, hello, it's you, man. No. Me. Eleven thirty. So, can you hold this for twenty minutes? How do we feel about a really long 20 minute pose? Uh, but um, so begin. <laughs> that was great. Did you see what happened with this mat? <laughs> so, in 20 minutes, we're going to stop. I'm going to talk briefly about what we're going to do next week, and we'll have some sharing. Now, how did we do that last time? Do you remember? We put the laptop in the middle, I think. Mm -hmm. Heidi's laptop we put in the middle. We'll do our best with sharing today. Again, even though it's a very, very long pose, start with the quick gestural thing. Try and relax into it. And just be a stick figure initially. Somebody's phone is falling. Probably not. 
probably mine. No, it's mine. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Checking in. Wow, I really, my hat's off to all the elementary and high school teachers out there who do this every day, the hybrid learning. I, I don't know how they do it. And to you parents who had to do that for so long and maybe still are. how you keep tabs on the little ones at home and the kids in the classroom at the same time. I like about the wonder poses. If you don't like the first one, turn your paper over and do a whole nother pose. It's a beautiful pose, but it's physical. Ironically, the longer, quieter poses are harder because there's less kind of marker for you to use. But there's always a friendly headroom. Four head lengths for the leg. Look at where the hands are, right at this level. Use the chair that will help you. Your arm rest goes from the elbow to the wrist. Shoulders are slightly tilted. And affect the tilt of the torso. And we're a little close, but we're short and we slowly graduate. So the hands and feet are going to feel ginormous.
I wouldn't, I wouldn't go any further with any of the
line is much stronger. Okay. Yeah, so it's overcoming some fear. Yeah, I I erased it again. Didn't have time to redo it. Yeah, this is so much good. Wow. How's that person? Headlines, baby. Headlines, baby. Oh, gosh. I have three minutes left. If you haven't started adding details, now's the time. Use the edge of its clothing to help you see the proportion that's in it. Next week, and I think next week our focus is the late great Michelangelo. Ooh. And that's why I think we're doing hands because what is his most famous image ever? No, that's not that's the Oh. <laughs> but his most famous. And we've spoken about her before. Those of you who are my veteran artists, I'm going to put it in the chat box in a minute. Jessie Mochran is the most amazing. She's another contemporary young female artist who does body parts. Oh. She doesn't do full figures. She oh. does portions of the human anatomy. Cool. And in interesting ways, like running off the edge of the page and and she does them in very classical, romantic style. You're in the life of a lot. What's her, how do you spell her last name? 
M O C A R I N. I'm going to put it in the chat box. Oh, you guys can't see the chat box. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> So in two weeks before we yeah. <laughs> Two weeks before we meet the launch. Okay. Something to look forward to. Yeah. Oh, some of you are leaving? I have to go. Not a problem. Bye. I'm sorry. Uh, You sure you don't want to take a break and go on the march with me? <laughs> Your class. Good luck. Where is it in Newark? Um, at the Sh Sharp James Rec Center is our rallying point, and then we are going to march to the Passaic Valley Sewerage Commission. It's the, site, it's the site of their proposed frack gas power plant that we are fighting against. My nephew is the city planner here. Oh, I want to meet him. Yeah, he lives in Jersey City. What is his name? Max De Silva. Guys, I don't see any people like that. I'm just one. Oh, forget it. Nick. So the way the calendar goes for December, the 29th is that we can come to the I will come in with Ben. Will you be there? I can be here. So we'll be here. Okay. And I have not determined what we're going to do for December, yeah, but. We've been doing a lot of life drawing, Michael. So we might, in December, we might take a break. Just letting you know. But you're welcome to join our class. What are we going to do, though? You have to teach us how to set this up. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi, maybe by next week I will understand how to do it. Yeah, maybe you want to go to the market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We want to know one of the reasons why we're in this. Of course, I, I thought it would be warm and I love the summer season. I love the season. But the other reason is that the whole AC is in the middle of the season. Oh. Well, what? The AC. What do you, you know? The way, I mean, Michael set this up for us, but you know, on Zoom, we're seeing everything and he's here and this is here. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got iPads, laptops. Uh, you know, iPhones, TVs. Well, I forgot to thank at the beginning of this video, so I'm going to do it right now. I really, really, really think the Hoboken Public Library has been extraordinary in their help to us. The fact that we have free life drawing classes is extraordinary particularly during a time of pandemic. So kudos, kudos. With all the minor difficulties that we've had, I feel that we've been exceptionally lucky. Thank you, Hoboken Public Library. For those of you who don't know, if you were in search of a life drawing class, outside of the library, you would be paying quite a bit of money to attend. All right, Michael, I, I think we have to stop because I want there to be a time for people to share. We must be almost done anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So we really we only have nine minutes.
minutes left. Usually I go through the queue on Zoom, but I don't feel like we have enough time, folks. What with our tech problems in the beginning and this wonderful long pose. So, Michael, a little technical. How do I put it on gallery view so I can see everyone's work? at once. I do this, right? Yeah. But how do I make it bigger? So you would try to remove the spotlight first. And then <laughs> yeah, go back to view up here. Gallery. Yeah. <laughs> four participants. Interesting. All right, so people at home, we can see your work. Everybody take a quick look at the screen. If you are willing to share your work, those of you who are at home and you're able to, we want to see your favorite drawing from today, please. Mm -hmm. Doris, if we, can you hold it up? Robin, if you're willing. No, not today. That's okay. Nice. All right. Woohoo! Three yeah. cheers. Yay! Look at the great proportions. <laughs> well done, everyone. All right. So we seem to have lost a few people in the group. That's a shame. But those of you who are here who would like to share, how do I spotlight the whole class here? Is there a way to do that, Michael? We'd have to. I turned off your phone. Okay. So we can't do that at the moment. But is there anyone who wants to hold up their work? Those of you at home, you're not going to be able to see it now, unfortunately. Unfinished. But I took a picture so I can see it. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. I am very proud, guys. Except the hand looks like a paw. Very proud.